In many ways, today was as much a day of rage as it was a day of grief. In the aftermath of an event that shakes the country, like yesterday's sh shooting did, though, there are political professionals among us with ice water in their veins who look at a tragedy like this and see opportunity. They see opportunity to dodge some of the consequences of unflattering news. For some folks in Washington, the day after a particularly repulsive massacre of American children is a good time to empty out the hamper, air out the proverbial dirty laundry that you don't particularly want people to focus on too much while they're worried about bigger and more tragic things. So, the New York Times was the lucky recipient today of the long, 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 long delayed release of financial documents from the Trump inaugural committee. Now, that may seem like kind of a picayune concern, right? Random accounting matter related to the Trump administration? Hmm. Why focus on that? The reason it's important, the, the reason it, it, it very well may not be a coincidence that they finally chose to release information about the inaugural committee on today of all days, is because the Trump inaugural committee was run in a way that no other inaugural committee has ever been run. Inaugural committees aren't supposed to be secretive. They're, they're not supposed to drag on and on with no disclosure. They're not supposed to be a source of intrigue. They never are. I mean, like that standalone bill they passed today to attack the rights of disabled people and gut the ADA. Or like that standalone bill they passed a year ago today to help mentally ill people get easier access to guns. An inaugural committee just does one thing. It's, it just does a standalone discreet thing. And and he raises money once for a one-time event that is over in one day. And then when it's done, you know, they square up the accounts, they close themselves down, and they cease to exist. That's it. Even for really gigantic inaugurations like Barack Obama's in 2009, the inaugural committee fundraising, setup, execution, and shutdown, it's the sort of thing that takes a few months. Open, exact, uh, open, execute, shut down. That's it. As financial things in Washington go, this is one of the simplest financial things in Washington. They open, they execute, they shut down. Not the way it happened with the Trump inauguration. Trump inauguration, for reasons we will not go into here, um, was a fairly small inauguration. There were not very many inaugural balls. There were no big, glitzy attendant events where hundreds of thousands of people went, right? At, at the inaugural parade, it was cold. Uh, a lot of the stands were empty. There were lots of protesters. I mean, for this inauguration, though, the Trump inaugural committee inexplicably raised more than double the amount of money ever re raised for any other inauguration. A and that led to questions that could really only apply to this inauguration. Namely, where did all the extra money go? Because this was not a $100 million event. Over the course of the past year, the inaugural committee for President Trump has refused to release any accounting of what they did with the more than $100 million that they raised. On at least four separate occasions, in response to reporters' questions, they said they were just about to put out the numbers, just about to put out the accounting. They're going to release all their records and close up shop any day now. One time they even claimed that they had just passed with flying colors a formal audit. Announcing that raised the prospect that we would all get to see that audit. So we'd all be assured there was no funny business going on with any gigantic Trump-oriented slush fund in Washington. They never released that audit. Al along with other news organizations, we've been trying for months to get any sort of accounting at all for what happened to all that leftover money. Slush funds tend to attract scandal. So we've been trying to figure out what happened to the tens of millions of unaccounted for dollars that must have gone along with the Trump inauguration. It's been sort of a difficult slog. The chairman of the inaugural committee is a close friend of the president. He's the one who announced the phantom audit and then never released it. The treasurer of the inaugural committee never got back to us despite our attempts to contact him, although that may have had something to do with our reporting that he had been an unindicted co-conspirator in a giant tax evasion scheme on Wall Street. Uh, there was also the deputy chair of the inaugural committee. He turned out to be very hard to reach as well because his name is Rick Gates. He was also the deputy chairman of the Donald Trump for President campaign and he is currently facing multiple felony charges in federal court brought by special counsel Robert Mueller. Now we'll get back to him in a second.
The information quietly released today to the New York Times indicates that the reason uh, we haven't been able to find out what happened to any of the leftover money from the Trump inauguration is because there's almost no money left over from the Trump inauguration, which is astonishing. They say they've got two or three million dollars left in the bank from a hundred and seven million dollars that they raised. Biggest inauguration ever was about 50 million. How did they spend over a hundred million dollars on this particular inauguration that they put on? Well, now we know part of how they spent that was by sending $26 million to a company that was only created one month before the inauguration happened. A company created in December 2016, which was paid $26 million out of the inaugural fund. It's a company that was created by Donald Trump's wife's good friend. Uh, she herself reportedly cleared well over a million and a half dollars on the deal. But her company cleared this gigantic amount of money. I mean, even if the money she just stuck in her pocket. Her company cleared like $25 million for the inauguration. Now, to be clear, there is a general contractor which basically does every inauguration. Um, this one for Trump, both of them for Obama, both of them for George W. Bush, both of them for Bill Clinton. There is one big contracting firm called Hargrove that's kind of always in charge now of the major preparations for the inaugurations. That company did the Trump inaugural like they've done all other recent inaugurations, and they got paid $25 million to do it. That sort of makes sense. That's sort of in keeping with other inaugurations. But then in addition to the general contractor who does all the inaugurations getting paid $25 million, in addition to that, this woman who knows Melania Trump also got paid another $25 million, plus a million and a half for herself. And nobody is quite sure what that's all about. But maybe nobody will remember to ask about it since they snuck the news out in the middle of an all-income.